from the various tables. Unless you have to remember what you've, what you've said. Is there, we've about, um, we've appeared at 20 minutes for a discussion. Okay. Um, any table here that feels a passionate need to talk on this first of all? Who's going to rush forward? Well, that's, that, that's a really strong response here. <laughs> now, I, I'm going to pick somebody. Okay, there you are. There's a hand up there. And as, it, as the discussion goes on, if what you want to say is, I think what they said at the last table is what I agree with, maybe that's enough to say. But I'm, you want to jump in. Yes, and anything else you want to raise? Mm -hmm. All right, Harvey. Mics are there, are they somewhere? Mike here, yeah. Yep. There's two mics here. Here. Thank you. So, um, I think we all followed here this presentation with great interest from the table, and we all come from different backgrounds. So we all really see the benefits, I think, from a, you know, a common library emerging. So really coming back to the answers, um, take into account Ireland's adoption, kind of group appreciate the benefits. The question is, you know, the benefits of that library, we can say like, well, obviously yes, but we really were thinking more, in a sense, as a template that people in manufacturing, you know, uh, environments can use to initiate the creation of objects you know, that they're then flexible to be changed in any practice. And that would be very, very helpful to set conventions in relation to object IDs, object names, layering standards, and object categories. Because we believe that um, on this table, that no library will be fully inclusive, and it's, you know, it will be very, very strict in its use that could potentially limit the creativity at, its, at the design stage on any projects. So, because like initially, like when you design a building, you wouldn't really design with a typical product. You would design with, uh, you know, objects type. And, but we believe as well that this library could be useful at specification stage, of course, to work with manufacturing data. But also, one thing that was highlighted here is that um, the key that is very, very important in all this discourse of IFC objects and libraries is the, the fact that all the objects should be interoperable between systems, that you could import one object from Archicad, put it to Revit or Vectorworks, and it would be still parametric. That would be, in our view, you know, uh, a key benefit. So who would be the best to um, initiate a BIM library? Well, initially I think it's going to be like a combination of manufacturers, individuals within each practice. I suppose it can be, um, if we see the benefit of a generic template, we can always, I suppose, um, set up an expert group or else, you know, it can come even from the vendors. Each one can specify their own um, template in accordance with an agreed national a system. So taking on to question two, um, should the implementation of the BIM library benefit all of the construction industry? Well, the answer to that is, we believe it's, of course, it's yes. Everybody can benefit from uh, standards and protocols, especially from a, only one library, it may be perhaps questionable, but like if you work from a good template, definitely will have huge benefits. And answer to the question to be, which is like, would it be too much of a challenge? Well, not really. If you set the parameters of the process well in advance, if you work, you know, based on a template, this should be achievable in quite of a short um, time, you know, time. So I'm not sure if there was anything else. Yes, um, thank you. Did you want to come in? On the table here. And then anybody else wants to rush in, they're very welcome. Would you like to start? But just to add to that, I think there was a consensus at our table that for the size market we are, it didn't make sense for us to develop an independent library and an independent standard and that you know, we, our regulations and standards are quite closely linked to the UK so it would make sense to follow what's happening in the UK. I mean, there's a danger that we might go off in a, the wrong tangent if we try to do our own thing. Um, in terms of who 
might pay, I mean, the cost was an issue. Who would pay for producing such a library? And maybe a starting point would to get the professional bodies to agree on a, a standard and a direction, and then maybe also involve the NSAI um, in the process, and maybe in, uh, work closely with a company like NBS to develop an Irish version of the, the library and uh, the standards. So just to add to what Bernard said on question one. Um, and I suppose that, that follows through to question two. Um, one of the things you said, maybe um, we should just focus on particular segments of the market initially. And maybe segments that are actually um, developing at the moment, so the educational health sectors, um, rather than trying to get everybody um, up to speed in one go. Um, and I mean, I think, and again, just getting some joined up thinking in the industry, which is something we don't really have, is getting all the, the professional bodies and uh, the key stakeholders to s speak the same language. Ralph has put forward a proposition that a previous Attorney General, John Kelly, made many years ago. He said, legislation arrives in Ireland by post from the UK. Post is very slow, it takes about seven years usually. So I hope it's not the same for them. Do you know the table that would like to make a comment? Or maybe I'll just pick on somebody. What about this table here? Sorry to pick on you. <laughs> Um, just following up on Ralph's point there, um, one of the a couple of the issues we picked up on where um, it, it's necessary to bring all stakeholders to the table at a very early stage, um, particularly quantity of surveyors who are going to turn this model into a, a round number at the end of the day um, when the job is getting priced. And there was some difficulties that we experienced last year at the CETA workshop that we did with the Department of Education in terms of converting the Revit data into a format that could be imported into a quantity surveyor software package um, and actually accounting for all the components that were in the model because some of them are scheduled and some of them are unscheduled. Um, and then the second point was the language that is used in the, um, the National Building Standards uh, specification and any implications it has for uh, the GCCC format of contract, which may be different from the contractual arrangements used in the UK. Maybe you have a table at the back. Anybody there want to volunteer? Me? Can I have the table right in the corner there? The very last one. Now this is terrible, what I mean. Everybody has a lot to say. Hi. Um, we just had a couple of smaller points. One was regarding the, the standards, and it was mentioned that possibly um, it shouldn't just be um, a local naming standard. It should be possibly a worldwide um, standard with uh, local sections in it. That might be something to consider if, um, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, people looking work for um, uh, on an international basis. Um, we also queried whether an institution uh, like NBS, which is closely related to um, uh, REBA, should uh, head this, since it's connected to the architects more than to the other other disciplines. Um, <laughs> So the other disciplines felt they needed to be represented more in the development of a uh, uh, standard library for this. Um, also to facilitate uh, knowledge development within the disciplines at the same pace um, so that none of them is going to be left out uh, at the stage of collaboration. Those were probably the main points we discussed. Um, maybe this table is right in front of me here. Shirt, yeah, striped blue shirt. Yeah, Bernie, yeah, Bernie. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, he did. You, you, you've talked already. Sorry, Bernard. Sorry. Get the, let's see. There we are. Somebody's back. <laughs> Sorry about that, Bernard. I Sorry. I might speak. You're somebody else. You're our leader. Don't rush to volunteer. Um, well, we, we, we came to much the same conclusion that the um, the NBS were probably the best people uh, to develop a library for Ireland um, on the basis that we should be able to leverage all their work into an Irish situation. But it would be very, very important that there be regional variations within the NBS. I don't know, Drew, how regional it is. Do you have Scottish versions and Welsh versions? Can we have an Irish? Our building regulations are quite close, but there are often bits that are a little bit different. Right. Um, yeah, it was, it was a comment that was picked up on this table as well. Um, and, I mean, my understanding is that the MBS is, is quite widely used in Ireland. Um, not known enough of the background of what the differences are in the building regulations. They're, they're very slight, but if you run out totally on the MBS, you'd be wrong in Ireland. Right. right. So you have to be that's aware that's of differences. It's yeah. an interesting point that I wasn't fully aware of. Mm. Um, so it's something I'll certainly discuss um, with, with the MBS. It would it be possible to do regional versions of it? Uh, of, the, of the BIM library, um, we don't specifically state um, what standards that the components will comply with, because the, the, the components will be tied to the specification. So if you're using the MBS specification tool in Ireland, um, so you'll be writing your specification and coming up with your, your reference clauses there. Your, your BIM library um, can be produced so the, the specification com, uh, references tie through. So any reference to um, standards are picked up in the, uh, in, the, in the specification rather than the component. Mm -hmm. So the, the generic library that is uh, to be launched is, is very much a generic library that, because it, it doesn't um, specifically state the standards that, that it's, uh, it's built to. Okay, so it, it gives it that flexibility that it can be used. So it's possible for this national building specification to have regional bits? That's what I would have to look into. Yeah. Um, I would guess there's quite an overhead to do that and it's the balance between... Do you have this issue with Scotland? Um, I don't think also, so. I don't know, because they certainly have um, far different uh, building regulations. Mm. So it's but certainly within this uh, specification uh, writing software, that there's reference to the, um, the EU standards and things like that, which are applicable in, yes. uh, in all countries. Anything else? There does seem to be a key issue here, and that mm. is, do we have the capacity, well, I won't use the word ability, but to, bring, to actually to devise such a system for this country? Or is it something better done by NBS? And if you think of the fact that NBS have learned from the US Army, I suppose we can learn from MBS and the US Army. So, anybody else wants to come in on this? Feels, oh, there, there we are. Just about five minutes left. Just as a user of the NBS software, as a specifier, um, I think one of the great benefits of it is that it is one system and uh, in the guidance um, bar on it, you do get the different you get the different references and guidance to the different regions, be it Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Ireland. And that information is there to be able to compare how it relates, how that specification clause relates, or what you should be inputting it for the region you're actually in. And uh, I think that's actually a very good way of working within the NBS, more than actually trying to segregate it out in, into different regions. Um, if you look at standards at the moment, you have to look up Irish standards, you have to look up British standards, you have to read many different standards. I actually prefer the way the NBS have it set up where it is one platform and you have guidance on a clause by clause basis and you can compare and see um, what might be specific to your, to your location. And I would think that the models would be, um, taking a similar approach, those would be more beneficial as well when we're working in the Irish market, but we'd also hope to work in other markets, UK markets, uh, to be able to work in kind of one platform, 
but have the flexibility to amend it or edit it to your own local needs, I think is much more beneficial than going into the Irish version of the models and then you get a job in the UK and then you have to go into the UK version of the models and learn what's different about those. Um, so I'd probably be of a different view than maybe some of the more um, uh, the, the, the latter uh, comments. I suppose just widening it from our own point of view, we thought that in this table that the um, NBS is a, kind of a natural home for the BIM library. Um, I suppose working as an architect, you know, we try and bring everything back to the NBS specification, be it um, uh, assemblies or components. So working the other direction, starting off with your NBS specification, call it the new system, to actually populate your model with the actual objects coming from the specification, I think is um, very attractive to us and very beneficial. Um, I think the difference to the civil engineering side and probably the M&E side as well is that they don't use NBS um, to the, to, certainly to the same extent. Certainly, the, I think the civil side is, is, is kind of different. So I think that's where the gap is between the different uh, disciplines. Um, but certainly, I think the thought across the table was that um, having a, 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 a multi-sector library is really critical. Um, if it is seen as just an architectural library, um, I think it'll, it'll lose uh, the potential for consistency across the whole sector, um, that the same codes are being used no matter what sector you're within. And also, I think manufacturers will um, more likely to populate it and, and contribute to it if they see it being used by all sectors, even if it has start off being a very, I suppose, um, simplified library from the beginning and just builds up over time. Uh, I think even if it had just some basic components in there, certainly architects will begin to reach for it, I think, straight away and, and more as it develops. Yeah. Thank you. You, you. I should have said, in fact, that quite a long time ago, David, the late David Keane did work with the NBS on seeing should there be an Irish version, but in fact came to the same conclusion that you needed to make the references, and he did some work with them at the time. And I come back to the point that NBS has 130 employees, not all working on this, but it does take a huge amount of intellectual muscle to get this, this particular system working. Um, we're coming to the final stages now. I might ask Drew in a couple of, just very briefly to sum up. And I'd like to remind you that the next event is maybe the most crucial of all, because it's Wednesday 28th of March, and it's social, cultural, process change management required for BIM implementation. And if somebody can address that in 30 minutes, I look forward to it. <laughs> but there is, as you know, in your hand in your handouts there, we'll take with you the, the remaining um, various events, all of which feed into this process. There's no one answer. I think there's no one presentation that's going to solve the problem. They all fit together. And at the end of the process, with CETA, I'm sure we're going to see how does it fit together, where do we go next, and how can this be moved forward. So I'd like to ask to a very five minutes to sum up on what you've heard. Yeah. Um, well, I think initially I'd uh, would like to thank Alan for, for asking us to come over to, to do this presentation. Um, I think it's a very exciting time in construction, even though that the actual uh, sort of the workload isn't where we would like it to be. Um, but I, th I think it's exciting times ahead, and I think this is really going to change the, the drive and the way that uh, construction is uh, happens in the UK and in, in Ireland. Um, and I think it's, it's you know it's really interesting uh, to be involved in this process. Um, certainly, there's been some some great points raised today and it's, it's really um, promising to hear that he's all really active and, and, um, and willing to get involved with the big process. Um, and I think, okay, thank you. On your behalf I'd like to thank Joe for his presentation. Which was, I think, unlike many technical presentations, just told us as much as we needed. There's a famous uh, Herber quote where it was the young child was asked to review a book about penguins, and she said, This book tells me more about penguins than I want to know. I think it's very difficult to achieve that, and thank you, Drew. Um, and I think he's obviously shown people enough to catch a great deal of interest, particularly those who are using MBS at the present moment. Um, I'd like to thank you for coming and I hope you will all take this with you again.
and commit and get your colleagues to commit to the remaining events. Because unlike most breakfast seminars, you actually do get a bit of a breakfast beforehand. It's always a problem with breakfast seminars. There's a seminar, but there's no breakfast. So that's, and I'd like to thank CETA uh, for all, for actually making this happen. Thank you.